you know, just crass jokes. And I was like, was I not supposed to be writing those the whole time? <laughs> Hold for five years. You guys didn't tell me? All right. Are you guys happy? Like, I don't know what, like, I'm happy for Jared. Who else is happy for Jared out there? Give, your, give him a round of applause for Jared, guys. We're happy for him. Oh my god. That, like, could you imagine if those things weren't true? That would ruin his life. So, <laughs> some kind of silver lining on this for him. Ah, oh, yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. He's gonna have a, he's gonna have a register as a sex offender. Which means that he can't even work at a subway. <laughs> Sometimes I watch my neighbor's kids. Uh, I'm not like a babysitter, it's just a hobby. <laughs> but you guys are figuring out the tone. <laughs> but seriously, like, you know, like, the weirdest thing with uh, growing up, my friends are starting to have kids and stuff, I don't know what to say to kids. Like, I don't know how to talk to children, you know what I mean? Like, I'm an adult. I'm into superheroes and comic books. I got <laughs> nothing in common with a kid. Got no common ground there. Uh, I'm awesome at saying hello to children, though. Like, when I see, like, a kid or whatever, it's like, Oh, hey, what's up? What's going on, buddy? What's up, Kyle? And we run up, we do a high five. We nail that high five. It's a perfect high five. Perfect ten. Five plus five. You're keeping track. <laughs> perfect. And then at that point, it's just like, Ugh. Like, I seriously don't get how people fuck kids, because what turns me on is good conversation. So, at that point, you pretty much are just going to let him out of the van. Anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going for. You guys just had David Bros. You want good laughs, you had him. Alright. Now Farrell's cleaning up up here. The dirty shit again. Um, there's uh, this group of Samoans that live by my house that play volleyball at this park, and uh, I wanted to play volleyball with them the other day, so I went up and I asked them if I could play volleyball with them. Volleyball, sorry, I dry them out. But, uh, volleyball with them. And uh, they laughed right in my face and told me I wasn't tall enough. And that really hurt my feelings, guys. Uh, what I'm getting at is eighth graders can be real dicks sometimes. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> uh, growing up, I said a lot of Our Fathers. My sister and I grew up saying a lot of Our Fathers. Stuff like, where is Our Father? Is Our Father coming home tonight? What? Why would Our Father's girlfriend steal the toaster when he broke up with her? What was Our Father thinking? Buying Pop-Tarts when we don't have a fucking toaster. <laughs> you know how depressing it is to be frying up Pan-Tarts when you're nine? It's pretty bad. Other kids at school make fun of you too. Like, oh, hey, fuck Kyle! This family's no fucking toaster! Like, yeah. What are you gonna do? It's true. <laughs> you learn an important life lesson that day, which is, you know, you can let those kids bother you, but that's not gonna bring your toaster back. <laughs> so, it's time to grow up here, guys. It's a uh, my girlfriend and I, we do a thing called, uh, you, guys, you guys know what cosplay is? You know what cosplay is? You've heard the term cosplay? My girlfriend and I, we do, uh, we do cosplay. If you don't know what cosplay is, it's pretty much where uh, I put on a goofy sweater and wait for her to pass out. <laughs> uh, take a second, it's fine. You drink my water. <laughs> it's a Cosby joke. <laughs> I was proud of myself. They got on the radio. I got a Bill Cosby date rate joke on the radio without a censor. I feel like an accomplished person now. It's really why we do this crap. That's what, this is our craft, guys. It's uh, it's art, if you want to call it art. Don't call it, don't call it art at all. Uh, happier subjects. You remember the first time you're 69? Who remembers the first time you're 69? Just be like, yeah, we've all done it, right? Yeah, I had no idea I was that bad at bowling. That's how it works. <laughs> the manager came out and everything. He's like, sir, we've never seen anybody do this bad with the bumpers up before. <laughs> like, you gotta go. And give us back our socks. Like, he was kind of shitty about it. You remember the first time you had sex? First time you had sex, guys? All virgins in here. It's amazing. But the first time I had sex, uh, what was that saying? Uh, couldn't shit right for a week? <laughs> yeah, we were doing it wrong. We started role playing like way too early. I was like, hey, why don't you be the guy? And she was like, why do I have to be the guy? You're like, talk like this? And I was like, mm hmm. You talk like a monster, I'm afraid of you. Have at me, Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> we were deep in role playing. Uh, who in here has ever got an STD? Oh, 
statistically, you're a bunch of fucking liars. That's cool. Awesome. You're sitting next to a liar. Two of you. See, that's how it works. Statistics. Uh, I got a, I had a chlamydia scare once. I had a chlamydia scare, and so I had to do the thing where you call people, and the first person I had to call was my mom. Can you imagine? I had to call my mom, and I... You don't want to talk to your mom about that, but I had to because that gives her a chance to warn her other partners, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry you guys hate responsibility. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know the time when you're supposed to get tested? Is it, uh, what is it, every other, like, every six months? Or, no, it's when someone calls you and tells you you should probably get tested for STDs. <laughs> Or a nice little scan, you lie, and they give you amoxicillin when you have uh, sinus infections. That's a way to scan the system out of the common cold. It's nice. Not that I ever did that a couple times. It's fun. One. Fun, real memory. Sharing, guys. More real memories. Uh, you guys are all drinking out there? That's good? Yeah! You gotta be careful, though, when you're drinking, because the first thing alcohol affects is your judgment. Let me paint a little picture, a little story, a little fable for you. Maybe it happened, probably it did. Let's say you meet a girl and you want to go take her out for a night in the town. You want to get to know each other first, so you start out with some wholesome fun, some family-friendly shit, like you getting down on a whole big plate of chicken wings together. Some of that four-alarm fun, guys. And you hit it off. You guys, the night's going well. It's going amazing. And you want to, you know, transition into something a little more intimate, a little more sensual, erotic, sexual even. Something like finger banging, for instance. Now, good judgment would dictate that before you go from one thing to the next, you wash your fucking hands, you animal. <laughs> but you've been drinking. So now your lady friend is sitting in the bathtub like a rape victim because you just set her vagina on fire. That's how that works. The only action you're getting tonight is petting her head and telling her to look at the rabbits. <laughs> all you got. Little pro tip, you want to... Uh, you want to make your dojo, your bedroom, whatever you call it, a little more like a pizza hut and just keep a roll of paper towels right there on the nightstand. You know? Oh what? Is even if the night doesn't work out, you get home and you have paper towels on the nightstand, guys. <laughs> like I said, I do have a girlfriend uh, now. Like, she's pretty cool. She's half Native American and uh, we like to pick on each other and tease each other. So what I do is uh, I take crumple of garbage and throw it at her feet to make her cry. <laughs> I'm not a good person. <laughs> what? <laughs> but more on alcohol, guys. Uh, yeah, we went out the other night drinking. Uh, we like the bars, we hit the bars pretty hard. Uh, I hit it slightly less hard than her. I hit it to the point where I got to use my imagination to pretend I wasn't drunk driving us home. <laughs> so, uh, some of you are creative too. That's good to know. It's fantastic. But uh, yeah, we get back, we, uh, we go back to the house, we, uh, we do the deed, and then in the morning I go to work. And I text her, hey, how about last night? And she texts me back, I don't remember last night. Did I just date rate my girlfriend? Is that what I do now? As I inch closer to 30? That's awesome. That's, uh, that's not the funny part, don't worry. Guys. But uh, yeah, it's... That would bother me all day, though. Like, all that. I don't want to have a weird text conversation about sexual assault. So I waited until I saw her later, and I looked at her like, honey, like, do you really not remember last night? And she looked at me with those sweet eyes, and she just went, Aah! Now I don't like to use the word retarded. I prefer the term mentally handicapped. Uh, I don't really like saying that about my girlfriend. I just like to tell people that she's got a couple extra chromosomes hanging out. Doing extra chromosome shit, shooting dice, whatever chromosomes do when there's too many of them. That's what she's got going on. And I hear, I see it, I can feel it from some of you. Don't you fucking judge her. Don't you judge her, don't dare. She has the most beautiful almond shaped eyes. They're a little close together for some people, but I think she looks like an angel. She gave me a hand job in the movies once. I didn't have to cut a hole in the bottom or nothing. She just buried her fist down like the Incredible Hulk. Rip my penis off. Threw it across a dark theater, and like hit a guy on the side of the head. He's like, we're watching Hunger Games. He's like, are they still hungry? Oh, I couldn't remember shit. It gave me amnesia, like an episode of The Honeymooners. And when I saw the blood on her hands, I knew what I had on mine, and that's a keeper, guys. My name's Kyle Ferry.